Welcome to the Four Listeners Program. Welcome aboard, everybody. Thanks for checking us out this week. What up, everybody? I'm Spear. On the mics with me this week is the Z-Man. What is up, Z? Tell me where in the world is Carmen San Diego? I don't know. We'll have to find out. Uh, on the other mic is the mighty Gantor. What is up, Gantor? I hated that game as a kid. Yeah, I, it was I, hard. I loved that game. I had all of them. I had Where in the World, Where in the USA, Where in Where in Outer Space. I had all of those games. Man. You know, you can you can uh, get it on your iPhone or your uh, mobile device. It's, can, it's a pretty good game. Can you really? Is it like yeah. the, is it the OG game? It's pretty close to it. It's like you know, she travels. You gotta like find the clues in that area so that you know where to, the next place is, and then they stay. Hey, do you think they're this place, this place, or this place? And if you're wrong, you lose time. And if you're right, you uh, you go there, and then you, you repeat the process again. You just huh. keep finding clues and clicking on shit. And well, right, and the only way you're gonna look up any of that stuff if you don't know it is if you Google it, right? You gotta Google that shit. You gotta Google that shit. So this week, something must be done about life without Google, because it occurs to me that I can't do pretty much anything in life anymore without Google. Or without search in general. Like, I can't, like, search in general has become such a pervasive part of how we live our lives. I don't know how I would do half the shit I do without it. The fact that Google, which is not a verb, is actually used as a verb now, too. Yeah, right. right. A, a Google is just a big-ass number. Right, and it's not even spelled the way Google spells it, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I would do it. I mean, this whole, like, the where in the world is Carmen San Diego thing is, is a perfect example. Because you would just Google the answers. That's not. That doesn't. It's not a game at that point. That's like saying, "Let's play Trivia Pursuit with Google." But, yeah. the, but, the, but it's not a challenge. But like, what would you? What would you have done? Like when you played that game when you were a kid, what would you do? Like you're gonna get like you're gonna get some like. She went to a place where the currency was rubles. The fuck do you know about which country has rubles? That's the point of the game. Well, then how did you figure it out? Because in order for you to figure it out, you would have had to. Research Dude, it or like, find out. It's like Jeopardy. Why is Jeopardy a, a game show that people watch on television that gives away money? Yeah, but that's it's because it's hard. But that's because you're supposed to you're supposed to have that knowledge. Right. The, Carmen San Diego was an educational game, so you had no, to No it wasn't. Yes, it, it was. Did, it didn't teach you all it taught you was that you chose wrongly. <laughs> and the bitch got away. Oh right. So you just do process of elimination? Is that what you're talking about? No, you, it didn't work like that. It was a multiple. It was also. There were it, was, it, was also it was also like the only game you had, so you just played the game a hundred times, and it just eventually it would start repeating yeah, you, questions. Yeah, you figure it out. <laughs> okay, well, if you make a wrong guess, like she gets away, and it's like you're terrible at this game. But but if you, maybe uh, you should go play Logo or something. But you can't go play Logo. But if you if you didn't if you wanted to get better at that game, the way you would figure it out would be to go learn something about the country that had ruble yeah. as its currency. Yeah, but not while you're playing the game. That's something that you would do after the fact. So that's what I'm saying. What would you do? What would you do in order to figure out where the ruble was currency? Encyclopedia Britannica or ask your mom. Yeah, well, right. You go, you go ask your mom or you go look at the encyclopedia. Like you didn't have Google. There was no immediately available resource for you to determine what country had the ruble as its currency. It wasn't immediate. You'd have to go find – you'd have to <laughs> – if you didn't know what country, you'd have to look up ruble, you know, and hope that it was in the encyclopedia that way. And God forbid it was something that was actually current, more current than your encyclopedia was. Right. They didn't have, they didn't have an update button. Exactly right. Exactly right. Like, you, there were different editions of, like, the encyclopedia, whether it be World Book or Encyclopedia Britannica, right? So you're, you know, if you had, like, your, your mom's set of encyclopedias from, like, the 1970s, you were fucked. Yeah. And then it was, and it was like, I remember, I remember I had World Book. You guys have World Book encyclopedias? I don't remember uh, which ones we had. We had blue ones, and mine were fucking wicked old. I think I had Britannica. See, the Britannicas were the nice ones. The Encyclopedia Britannica, that was the one that the, you know, if you went the extra mile to get the Encyclopedia Britannica, those were the really nice ones with all the details and all the pretty pictures. Yeah, but we demolished them. Why'd you do that? Why don't you take care of your shit? Uh, because we were kids. <laughs> I don't that shit, too. There we go. We were, we were a little Stalin over there in the, in the Ganther <laughs> <Okay>. household. <laughs> Rubbing well, out had, any reference had... to some despot in the Encyclopedia Britannica. Replacing it Dude, with the... Corey. <laughs> I, could, I, could, I could definitely see uh, Ganthor going in there and like fucking like erasing shit. 
and like changing the words so that when his brothers would go to like fucking do research papers, <laughs> he'd get all the wrong shit. And he would fail their tests. Rewriting history one encyclopedia at a time, one volume at a time. That never happened. That would be hilarious if you did that though. That sucked. When you guys when you guys did research papers when you were kids in either high school or college, what did you do? Well, college I had the internet. The library. The library, right? Yeah. And the yeah, internet, totally. the internet when we were in college was in its nascent stages. I mean, we we had like, like Netscape beta, like zero point nine beta. You know what I mean? Like Google wasn't even Google until like the yeah. the mid to late aughts. We had Lycos was the most advanced at that time. That's right. That's right. And <laughs> and the only other thing that I remember being able to use that was on the computer was LexisNexis. Well, that's old, old. That's what I'm saying. Like LexisNexis was like the the big database of like news articles and, and information and things along those lines. It was a massive, massive database. But you the only subscribe thing... to that, right? That's right. That's right. And and the only thing that it would do for you most of the time was it would point you towards a book or an article that you had to go find. And if it was an article, you had to go find it on like microfilm. That's you... what I was just going to say. Yeah, it was like microfilm. Microfilm was the worst thing ever. Oh. It's like, hey, here's an index to a fucking newspaper that was written 60 years ago. And uh, by the way, it's in grid H uh, seventeen, right? Which, which actually, the microfilm was fine. The microfiche was the worst, where you had to like scroll through the reels. Yep, yeah, where you're spinning through it with that little wheel that was on the side, and it's just like flashing past you. So you're doing a lot of forward and backwards, and forward and backwards, trying to find the right fucking page. And then you had to like zoom in the read, and then yep. God forbid you didn't have dimes so you could actually print the shit that's right <laughs> that's right <laughs> you had to have like dimes or quarters to print out all that shit and you had and you know it was like in like the nasty archive part of the of the library and that always made me have a shit yeah like that was immediate diarrhea for me because oh, it's like oh my god I'm sitting right. and I, I, you, you can you you're, you can feel it like the tension getting there it's like you're getting closer to like the place you're trying to get to and then all of a sudden code brown <laughs> and you got it and you got it and you got it get up and you, you lose your place that's right because because you, you lose shit. you lose your microfilm station right and then there was always a line of people that was waiting for those things yeah. i never saw anybody use that stuff really yeah oh, dude. oh we did oh man at the pub at the new york public library there was always a line of people waiting waiting online to use the microfilm and that's the way we said it in new york at the new york public library you were waiting online <laughs> I mean, I, that's that's how that's how I remember doing research papers was encyclopedias, microfilm, looking through dusty books, and I remember like in school, in even grade school, we go we used to go to the library to learn how to use the library. Yeah, like that's why you that. had librarians. Like that was a that was a position like where someone had to like be trained properly to teach to to know how to use all the shit and. The, the the taxonomy of the Dewey Decimal System the was Dewey Decimal System. Yeah, I don't, I don't like if I went into a library. Well, if I went into a library now and I had to navigate it by the Dewey Decimal System, I'd be completely fucked. Because I wouldn't would, be able to figure it out. I I don't. Well, I mean, it would take me a while. I think. Don't they have Google Maps inside of libraries now? <laughs> Everything is geotagged. They would yeah, have you, to. You like you just fucking type in the name of a book and it like tell, gives you mapping directions oh, right to it. That's my point. You, like. My concern would be that in the midst of an apocalypse, you, you get through your basic needs, right? You'd find food, find shelter, find water, and then the next two things you're going to go find are going to be power and internet, because without the internet, you are fucking lost. Or porn. Well, I, I, with no access to porn, I'm done. I, yeah. I mean, I don't know what I would do with myself at well, that you, point. You've, you've got some, you've got some uh, backup paper, paper copies, right? You would draw your own porn, probably. I'd have to. I, I would draw, like, stick figures. I would draw stick figures, and I would, what I would do is I would do like in those flip books, <laughs> right? I would make like a fl- uh, like a, a porn flip book with stick figures, and I would just I would flip it so that like I could see like the penis entering the vagina just over you know. Do you think you can get off that? I, I mean, any port in a storm at that point, right? I mean, what else am I going to do? <laughs> Here's one of the other things I think I don't know how I'd live without. I don't know how I live without Google Maps. Or GPS. Yeah, that's a big one. Google Maps, GPS in general. I mean, you can go back to MapQuest, and MapQuest was one of those things that like just changed the way you dealt with directions to how you get from point A to point B. Because before that, before yeah, that, how did you? How did people know? What did you do? It was like triptychs from AAA. Right. So that was the that was one thing. Right. So the first was the maps. Right. So you had the 
like if you were taking a long trip anywhere, I know my family had in the back of the car, in the in the in the seat pocket in the back seat, the the collection of maps and like road atlases. I still have them in my car just because I just haven't taken them out yet. Right, but that's what everybody had them. Everybody <laughs> had them in the back pocket, in the back seat pocket. I mean, it used to be the only reason those those seats had pockets was that you could put your fucking road atlas in it. That's true. And the 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 road atlas were great. The road atlas things were great for long trips, but like if there were any detours or anything along those lines, you were fucked because yeah. they didn't get down to the level of detail for like local roads. Right. You went to a gas station. You said, "Hey, how the fuck do I get here?" <laughs> right. That was terrible. I hated that period of of my life when I was driving. But but now you're so like you're so used to using the technology. Like I don't even know how to get to like the mall in, in my neighborhood. What? Like I still put the map. I still have to type the map address in and the address into that just to figure out how to get to like a store in my own neighborhood. That's crazy. Like, eh, I kind of have I kind of have an idea where it is, but I'll just use the map to tell me how to get there. That's crazy. I mean, the only reason I, I would know. use that kind of shit for, with the GPS would be to figure out how long it's going to take me to get someplace. Because that's that's the other revolutionary bit of Google Maps now is the the traffic reports right between like the things that they do with like local traffic reports and ways. You can know whether or not you need to like take a different road in order to get someplace, because otherwise you're stuck, right? The, there would always be the just the stuck in traffic, right? And then there's always the arguments. Do you ever see your mom and dad argue in the car? We're not going anywhere. Why aren't we going anywhere? Can we just get off? The kids are gonna have to go to the bathroom, and then it's like, and they're like, we can't go anywhere. And then they're always fighting with each other. Do you, I mean, do you ever do your, do your parents fight like that? Maybe not with that accent, but you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, definitely not with that accent. <laughs> oh. I would fight with my mom if she talked with that accent. <laughs> that was the the constant argument in the car with my with my parents. Well, apparently your sister has zero bladder. Well, yeah, because I mean she fucked up your 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 family vacation. Uh, when the you guys Arizona went to go thing, see that Indian Indian yes. bridge. Yeah, the Tonto the Tonto Natural Bridge. Yes, it was always a problem. Going to the bathroom was always a problem in my family. You needed to know how late, how much longer you were going to be stuck on the road. And now all of that is solved by Google Maps and Waze. All of it solved. Thank God. And the, the answer to the immortal question, are we there yet? Solved by Waze, right? Yeah. Well, then, then I, that's the cool thing, too. Is like, when was the first time you used, um, like, Google Maps? Have you ever used it on a train? No. It's pretty fucking cool. Like, if you're on, like, the Acela. Looking out the windows, I often use my phone and Google Maps to figure out where the fuck I am because it looks like a a war zone sometimes some of those backyards <laughs> that back up to the train that's newark with the amount of refuse and garbage dumped back there that's newark and then all all the the empty abandoned wastelands where the mob probably dumps bodies that <laughs> will never be found that's newark what the fuck dude I, I don't know <laughs> just like i look and i see the, i remember this one house it, the the stairs up to the second floor you know the outside external stairs deer skulls on each each stair. Deer skulls. Deer skulls with antlers. <laughs> and this is, you know, New Jersey, New York. It's weird. On the way to Penn Station. <laughs> That's Staten what Island. Are... No. <laughs> <laughs> I was coming home from, from college from D.C. Because that's as far as the bus took us. It was D.C. So I had to catch a train the rest of the way. I fell asleep in the, oh, on the no. way up. And I didn't know where I was. That's when panic hits you like a bucket of water in the face. Well, yeah, because it's like, okay, I have to wait wait till I get to a stop that I recognize, get off, find a pay phone, make a, a collect call to my parents who don't have a cell phone, who are probably at the train station waiting for right. me to explain to them. That I'm in that Boston. I, I fell asleep. Yeah, and I, <laughs> I'm in Boston or New Hampshire, and <laughs> I, I need money to get a ticket back. Right. Re- remember those days when you couldn't contact somebody? They were like, terrible. When you're trying to when you're trying to meet up with somebody and you're like, you know, I'll meet you at the whatever the water fountain. Yeah. And then you never you never find them because you guys were looking at different water fountains. Yeah, that was the worst, dude. Were, I don't want to go back to that time. Or even when you were giving directions to somebody, because that was the other way you had to do this. You had to give directions to somebody, and it was like, turn left at not the first light, not the second light, but the third light. Turn right, and if you if you've gone to the if you see a big tree, you've gone too far. What? <laughs> I don't miss those days either. That was my favorite. Like, all right, make a make a, a left at the supermarket. Go three lights. Make a right. You know, if you see, see, the, see if you see the old guy on the corner, you know, with all the yes. blankets. 
you know, you're terrible at directions because you would say that when you see the supermarket make a right, not mentioning the fact that there are three of them on the way <laughs> past or on the way to where you're describing. Or, right. Or you would be like, make a left at the place that used to be a radio shack. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what is it now? I don't know. It used to be a uh, radio shack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, those are that. Uh, that's the other thing that I think uh, Google Maps has saved us from is bad directions that somebody gave you over the phone. Or sometimes you'd get the hand-drawn maps. Anybody ever get one of those? Yeah. Where somebody yeah. like on the back of a napkin <laughs> would draw you not to scale necessarily. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Well, so, I mean, that, that, that used to be like just a stereotypical thing. Like, you know, you're like a stereotypical guy. He won't ask for directions. That's not a thing anymore. Yeah, that's right. A guy, a guy can ask for directions, but now he can do it in a manly way by asking his phone. Right. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that used to be. A, used to be people used to make fun of you. Oh, he's such a guy. He doesn't ask for directions. Yeah. Now Except there's no reason not to ask for directions. Yeah. That's right. Millennials have no idea what that means. That's right. <laughs> Fucking millennials. They don't know what any of this stuff means. Yeah, a millennial yeah. is a millennial is never going to run across the Dewey Decimal System. Or a payphone, or a payphone, or or a paper map. Remember, like the, the maps that you had to unfold, and yeah. then they were like the, right, and then they were like the size of your car, and then you tried to fold them back up again, and you could never figure it out. It always ended up being folded it, wrong. Yep, and it's always windy and it right. fucking rips. That's right. That's right. And then what do you end up doing? You end up just crumbling it up in a ball and throwing it in the back seat. Fuck this! And then you get in your car. Yep. It it's amazing what we take for granted. Now, with the the technology that's available to us via Google, not we millennials. It's amazing what millennials take. Even for us too. I mean, if you if you if somebody took away your you know your ability to use any Google or any search thing or any whatever, you would have a hard time adjusting back to the Stone Age. Yeah, but that doesn't mean I take it for granted. I'm thankful every day the wireless works <laughs> and the electricity is on. I will get. I will get like mad like physically angry if the wi-fi goes out yeah that's what i mean I, i'm thankful every day that it's working and on and internet is there because i remember the days when it wasn't like that and you'd have to hope nobody was on the phone line so you could use your modem and dial up and not get oh, a busy signal right. with the isp that's right. or back when you had to get get off your ass if you wanted to change the channel that's still the worst that's still the worst i think that's what i that if i, I take anything for granted it would be changing channels on tv i was convinced like, for the longest time that the only reason my parents gave birth to me was so that i could ch- i had to change the channel that was it i was, ju- <laughs> I was just going to say that the only way i would have had children i would i'd want to have children would be if remote controls didn't exist it was really that 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 and and mowing the lawn and raking the leaves were the only reasons that i was alive yeah what i like too is that google will do the comparison shopping for you as well Right, it'll look. It'll look if you search for a product, it'll give you a view of that product across several different websites, and it'll give you all the compar- uh, the comparable prices so that you can decide which site you might want to buy it from. Yeah, I haven't had much success with that feature. Surprisingly, that's one of the few Google things that I use that isn't very successful or accurate. Well, I mean, but just think about it. I mean, even if it's even if it's only partially accurate, like comparison shopping back in the day. You would have to go to n number of stores, and you would have to drive to all of them, right? And you would have to you would have to guess whether or not the store them. or call yeah. them, right? And if you were going to call them, where did you find the numbers for the businesses? Phone book, right? In the yellow pages. Do you think any of these <laughs> yeah. fucking millennials know what a yellow pages looks like? Nope. No, because their parents throw them away as soon as they get delivered. Right? They don't or they even end up... get delivered anymore where I live. They're I've got one. They, they 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 drop off a whole bunch of them at my place. But that's what you had to do. You had to look them. You had to look these things up in the yellow pages, and, and you then, had to guess what category it would be under. Right, and then you're um, you're calling all of them, and then maybe they're holding it for you, and then like you're driving out there. No, we sold it, and you're like, no, oh, but I talked to you on the phone. Well, you didn't talk to me. You talked to the girl who was here, and now she's not because she's an intern. Fucking yeah. hate interns. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, you do. <laughs> oh, I think you ever call up a store and ask do you have you know do you have xyz in stock and they're like hold on let me go check and then they go and they look and they say yeah we've got it and then you say how much is it they're like hold on let me go check and it's like dude (laughs) how do you not see this question coming right (laughs) seriously i'm not being unreasonable if you have it and how much is it (laughs) you should be able to ask those all up front if you have it how much is it what time you open today (laughs) no just use your brain get all the questions out all at one time 
um, I think we're missing the 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 main one for our livelihoods. Uh, remember when you had documentation. to documentation? Like, no, remember when you had to read a fucking book if you would learn how to code something? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, documentation, dude. And like Java you couldn't, docs. you couldn't just like Google the error code and look it up on Stack Overflow <laughs> yeah. or something. <laughs> yep. Like you actually had to know what the hell that error code was, and you're yep. like, okay, this error code can be one of seven things, and I only know that because I've had to research all seven of those. Do you guys quit when you when you Google it and you find no answers, and you're like, you know what, fuck it, I'm doing something different. That's right. I, I yeah. quit. I quit. Yeah, absolutely. I quit my job. I quit no, the internet. No, no, not quit. Not quit that. Just be That's, like, can't be done. Um, yeah. I can't stand. I can't stand when I'm trying to find something and it's just like, like, how do you Google plus equals? I don't. Yeah. Can you? That, you can't throw that operator into Google, can you? No. You actually nope. have to type. You can type plus equals like the words. But like oh, any really? of those that kind works? of yeah, yeah, any of the time that any of the syntax, syntax things, like if you're trying to figure out like what this operator does, like what's caret exclamation point do in a regex expression, right? Yeah, you can't you can't Google that. Yeah, I have that problem. What I what I like now is is the natural language because it used to be that in order to in order to Google anything, you had to understand some of the Google syntax. To real, I mean, there was a there was a like if you were a power user of Google, you could use like the different operators and things along those lines, and there were tip sheets for that stuff too. But what they've done now is they've made it much more natural language, so you can just type in a question, and you'll get more accurate results. I mean, it used to be that the one site that used to do that was Ask or Ask Jeeves. Remember, it was called that back in the day. Yeah. Yep. That was that was the first one that had that kind of natural language querying, and now Google does that too. So you can type in like. You know how many miles between the Earth and the Moon, or you know how long to hard boil an egg, or you know what's the uh, what's the average size of a penis. Like you can you can easily put that into African Google. African or European? <laughs> what? African or European? <laughs> I give it that's I, I give you credit for that. <laughs> Very clever. What is the airspeed of an unladen swallow? <laughs> no, we're talking about dick size, dude. Yes, I know. <laughs> well, you're you're forgetting the most. The most aggravating part of what you just described, which is not just searching for those things, it's type, submit, wait, 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 and results. then have to go th- and then have to go through the fifty pages of results because the best one was not the first one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my god, that's that's the thing that I take for granted. All the type ahead, instantaneous search results. That and the fact that I if it's not on the first, back. if it's not on the first page of results, how often do you ever go to the second page? Yeah, almost rarely. never. Almost never. I, yeah, these days, if it's not on the front page, I don't bother. Or you yeah. try asking it a different way. Yep. Oh. Right. I mean, you never. You, you always look at the like the first five things. If it's not one of the first five or ten things, it's like, oh fuck it, I'll ask it a different way. Oh, no. that smells bad. No, no. What did you do? I'm soiling my pants. That's good. Well, let's. Why don't we just wrap this up then? <laughs> well, you can go do what you got to do. All right, so what did we what did we learn? What did we learn about uh, Google, about search, about things we take for granted? Z-Man, how lucky you are to be alive right now. Very true. Very true. That is a, against the rules. Yeah, you cannot sing twice, dude. Not cool. I, I want to quote Hamilton. Where do you come down I, on that? Gantor? I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? I forgive you. In the greatest city in the world. Oh, in the man. Greatest city in the world. Oh, that's fucked we're, up. We're, All right. Okay. All right, Gantho, what'd you learn? Z probably smells like fucked buttholes right now. <laughs> it is not pleasant in my room right now. <laughs> shit. That is exactly what's happening here. There's holy shit. Okay. Uh, what did no, I no, learn? I, what, uh-huh. Can, what? You know what my favorite part about farting is? <laughs> What is your favorite part about farting? Besides smelling it? It's the fact that I know if someone else smells it, it's air that used to be in my asshole that's now in their nose. <laughs> okay, I learned that Z is disgusting. That's what I learned. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. that that's new news. It's not new learned information, but it's worth emphasizing. So if you think that Z is disgusting or you take Google for granted, why don't you go ahead and let us know on the Facebook page, facebook.com slash four listeners or four listeners.com. You can check out the show on Stitcher Radio or on iTunes or on Google Play. Just search for four listeners and we'll pop right on up and you can tweet at us on the Twitters at four listeners. We thank you for checking us out this week and we hope that you will check us out again next week. Thanks a bunch, everybody. Everywhere in the world is Carmen San Diego.
All right, you go take care of whatever nasty shit you got going on in your in your ass there. No, that's right. I'm good. You're good. You didn't smoke yourself I'm, out. I'm, I'm I'm only I'm here by myself. I can I can do whatever I want. <laughs> exactly. I, I, shelf books again at the library, dude. <laughs> <laughs>